Okay, biochemical energy production. Metabolism is the sum total of all biochemical reactions that take place in the living organism. Uh, catabolism is all metabolic reactions in which large biomolecules are broken down into smaller ones. And then anabolism is all metabolic reactions in which small biochemical molecules are joined together to form larger ones. So we have large molecules uh, that are broken down uh, by catabolism to small molecules, and small molecules can then be built back up into large molecules with anabolism. And uh, this can be with the large molecules, could be proteins, and then by catabolism, they're broken down into amino acids. The small molecules could be um, uh, fatty acids that are uh, formed up in tri to uh, triacylglycerols. A lot of different possibilities, but just large to small, small to large. And the metabolic pathway is a series of consecutive biochemical reactions used to, s to convert a smart starting material into an end product. And there's two main forms of metabolic pathways. Very simple, simplified, of course, but basic idea there is we have the linear metabolic path, where A goes to B, goes to C, goes to D, a different product each time. And they're uh, generally, they're catalyzed by enzymes, different ones as they go. But when we get to D, we're done. Uh, that's it. That's the product, and it goes on to do whatever it's going to do. But then we also have cyclic metabolic pathways, where we have A goes to B to C to D, and then D goes back to A, which seems kind of like a waste of time. But what they've left out here are the side products and the energy uh, that are the side products that are produced, the energy that's produced or absorbed all along the way. Uh, so, and... Uh, going around in the circle, other material comes in, either uh, matter or energy, to keep driving the cycle along. Now, where does the uh, where does the metabolism take place? Uh, that's inside of the cells, and what we have a eukaryotic cell has the DNA found in a membrane enclosed nucleus. So we have show here we have a very simplified form you want the nice pretty picture look in the textbook but this really simplifies it we have the plasma membrane and the nucleus and then we have the interior of the of the cell between those two boundaries so the cytoplasm is the water-based material of a eukaryotic cell that lies between the nucleus and the outer membrane that contains everything other than the the nucleus an organelle is a minute structure within the cytoplasm of a cell that carries out a specific cellular function. The cytosol is the water-based fluid part of the cyto cytoplasm of the cell. And then we have two uh, organelles that they mentioned here. Lysosomes, are uh, they contain hydrolytic enzymes needed for cellular rebuilding, repair, and degradation. And then the mitochondrion, that's one of them, and mitochondria for a series of them, is an organelle that is responsible for the generation of most of the energy of the cell, and that's what we're going to focus on. So let's just go back to the simplified picture here, just to show that uh, uh, we have the cytosol. And then we have uh, the ribosomes that we, we talked about in the last chapter, or two chapters ago. The lysosome and mitochondria uh, that are just found throughout the cell. So we, uh, just to give you an idea, and then, and then of course the nucleus here, in the, generally in the center. For the mitochondrion, we have here uh, the outer membrane, the inner membrane, the intermembrane space. The, each of these are crista. And then we have the matrix in the center and then ATP synthase complex. We're going to talk about, uh, well, we won't be talking about the, each of these parts in turn, but we're going to just be mentioning that a lot of this, uh, what we talk about down the line, is based in the mitochondria. So just to give you a, a basic uh, map of where these things are going to take place. Um, I think that's it. We'll stop there.